This video looks at the extreme ends of Seaford Bay, what approaches you can take and whether it's actually worth fishing there in the first place. The beach hut section near Splash Point at the eastern end is also referred to as a deep end. I've only fished here a couple of times and that's when conditions have been unfavourable for place elsewhere. If it's windy and the water is coloured and I don't think place are going to show, I come here in order to target the bass. Gear has to be stepped up because this end is well known for being snaggy. Quite often I just fish one rod, held high and with 30 pound brain as main line. If fishing two rods, I will cast them some distance apart because there are some large fish here that do kite when hooked and can easily cross your other line. It pays to stay close to your rods because bites can be quite fierce and easily missed. In spring and summer, most of the time I'll be using crab here. Either on panel pulleys or long two snood clip down rigs and occasionally loop rigs. You might have to wait some time for bites and you do miss quite a large proportion of them. It's still worth fishing lug or rag on your second rod but the larger fish will come to crab. I find that with a two snood crab rig quite often the bass come to the top snood. Keeping the snoods long gives the fish time to take the bait properly. Elsewhere at Seaford when I'm targeting flat fish I much prefer short snoods unless I'm having to scratch for a bite. I've missed this bite and a crab on the top snood has been taken. Notice I'm allowing the bottom snood to drop below the weight but I'm not sure that's a good idea here uh, given all the snags. When attaching the crabs I much prefer to have the remaining looking natural so I just remove the top shell and the legs from one side leaving legs dangling below the hook point. I'm not one for peeling crabs completely when targeting bass. I'd only use a small amount of elastic to keep the bait in place. On the bottom snood it's panelled so even less elastic is used there. I do like to wrap the top of the legs together and keep these well away from the hook point. Two crabs doubles your chances of a bite. This is my all time favourite rig for medium sized bass, say 2 to 5 pounders, and I'll explain how I make them a little bit later on in this video. I'm not casting these into the gutter, they're for long range use. I'm chucking it in line with the end of the jetty. Because my bites have come to the top snood, I've now fixed the bottom snood so it doesn't fall below the weight and uh, hopefully I'm not going to lose any rigs. The last time I fished this stretch I set up far too close to the jetty and lost several rigs, a couple of them whilst playing large fish. This time I've made sure I've set up well away from the jetty but I'm still casting in that direction but at least it's at an angle so I've got a little bit more leverage to get the fish out of a snag and hopefully I'm not going to lose any this time. Using stop knots rather than crimps means you can adjust your snoods you can have them one up one down as previously or two up as in this case. This rod is capable of casting long distances but with 30 pound braid, large baits, clipping down is essential and using a finger stool helps um, if you're having to give it quite a whack. As already mentioned, I'm casting in line with the end of a jetty and towards it, but not right up as close as I can get. I'm hoping to intercept any fish which is moving around from the wave cut platform beneath the chalk cliffs at Splash Point. That tends to happen closer to the top of the tide. So that's the prime time for fishing here.
It's quite slow, this session, and there are no other anglers in sight. I missed a couple of bites, but only one of them was a positive take. But half an hour down from the top of the tide, uh, I finally connect with one of them. And it's not a bad fish. Apparently bigger fish are caught the other side of a jetty. But I'd rather catch them this size than sit and wait for something which is a specimen. This one is nicely hooked in the bottom lip on the top snood. I find that's one of the advantages of using circle hooks. So these are the rigs I've used today. For this rig I use 60 pound tough stuff for the main body and for the snuds 26.7 pound stern I go for circle hooks the Tronics Pro ones the old ones which are sort of finer gauge wire really uh, three O's and one O's I start with snuds, so I'm threading the panel hook, which is a circle 1-0. I'm not sure what type of knot this is called, but I tend to use this for all my eyed hooks. So I wrap it, the line round three or four times, form a loop, then go through that loop the same number of times. You'd wet it and then pull it tight and bring the panel hook back down. Okay, so this will hold a crab nicely in place. Cut the tag end off. And at the other end, attach the cascade swivel using the same type of knot. Right, we do the same with the upper snud, um, only this time it's just a single 3 o and uh, at the other end attach the strong swivel. Thread one of the beads, 8mm beads, go for the cascade swivel making sure it's this way up, put another bead on, next bead for the top snood. swivel for the top snood and your last bead. I tend to use clips rather than swivels at the end of my rigs. Now that you've got your rig together all you need to do is to be able to tie stop knots either side of the beads.
to keep them in place. I tend to do two below and one above each of these snuds. It's a good idea at this stage to attach a weight to your bottom clip. Uh, place the, the bottom hook of the panel snud um, within the correct position and then extend your line until you get to where the first bead is. That gives you a rough idea as to where to start. Pull a cascade swivel down and the bead um, above, um, but don't make them too tight, you need a little bit of lee leeway and then put the, the, um, the top knot in place. So I'm just using normal mono here. And tie the remaining knot beneath the bottom one. I like to have two here in case I want to make it really solid. Um, you should put the top hook within the clip of a cascade swivel, extend it and then you've got an idea roughly where the stop notch needs to go on the top snud. So this is the flexibility of this rig is that you can allow the bottom snud to be able to run free down below the weight. So now uh, your hook and your bait hangs below the actual lead. Okay, and you can still obviously move this up uh, and clip up for casting. Um, and you can't do that if you used crimps. By contrast, the western end of Seaford Bay is the shallow end and it's referred to as New Haven East Beach. Um, where the dividing line between New Haven and Tide Mills, which I suppose is part of Seaford, is, I've got no idea. <laughs> you can get to it from Tide Mills, but it's a much shorter walk from the industrial estate at the end of Beach Road in New Haven. You approach it as if you were heading for New Haven East Pier. Um, so you head for Railroad Road, which leads to Clifton Road. That then takes you to Beach Road, and you're parking um, near the waterworks at the end of Beach Road. You have to cross the Mill Creek and follow the footpath uh, until you get onto the beach. You can then head in either direction, but I've chosen to go towards the west. If you go towards the east, you're heading towards Tide Mills, and that can be pretty prolific. Here I'm using ragworm and have baited up a standard free hook clip down place rig. A week prior to the session I had three sizable place and two smooth hounds. However, I only had six bites that day. Since I know this end can be quite hard, I'm just casting out one rod and just to test the water. If that doesn't produce, then I'll think twice about what I'm going to use on the other rod. I'm starting with a gentle lob, but the last time I, sp I fished near this spot, all my fish were at distance. This is the hottest day of the year, and despite the ideal conditions for place, I just got this feeling that nothing's going to happen today. I've arrived at mid-flood and there's no tidal run today. Um, I do need to still tighten up but I'm not using grip leads. These weren't needed last time and I do want to be able to drag the bait along the bottom if I'm not getting any bites. When fishing for flatfish I like to have my rods down as low as possible particularly if there's no tidal run.
having set up the second rod, I'm winding in the first to see if anything's been interested in my bait. Not even a nibble from a crab, so this can go straight back out again. I've now put my waders on, so I can get an extra distance on the cast. Already thinking that I might be fishing to avoid a blank, I've set up a scratching rig for the other rod. This includes very long snoods and small hooks, size 4 hooks. I'm hoping that the extra length of the snood might try and entice a small fish into taking the bait. You can't get the same distance, but you're covering a wider area with these long snoods. This is now a waiting game and I'm hoping that using 20 pound braid I should still be able to see the bites. That is if I get any. Tiny little knocks on the rig with the long snoods gets my hopes up. These then stop, so I drag the rig along the bottom. That seems to work, then I eventually get a bite worth striking into. Or is it a line bite from the swimmers?
flounder saves the day. So, is it worth fishing here? Well, I would say only if the other stretches at Seaford are overcrowded and you don't fancy the longer walk to the end of the East Pier. It's completely different to the splash point end of the bay, requiring different tactics. But if you never give it a go, you'll never know what it's like. And scratching for a bite can be, at times that is, as enjoyable as getting a bite of chuck. <laughs> 